So this is our personal statement workshop. And what we're going to do is we're going to start out with a couple of exercises to get you thinking about your personal statement. And then once we've done the exercises, I'm going to do a little bit of a PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to talk about things to think about when you're putting together your final present, your final power or final personal statement. So what are the medical schools, dental schools, um, optometry, podiatry, veterinary schools looking for in a personal statement? What things should you be thinking about? How are you going to organize your statement? And so on. So we are going to start with a um, an activity here. Oops, sorry. Uh, okay, we're going to start with an exercise and this is going to be about a 15 minute exercise i can't see all of you so i don't know if you're doing your your 15 minutes i really encourage everybody to spend 15 minutes um, for people who are doing this off the youtube i'm going to pause the um the the player so you can just pause for 15 minutes and then start again um, I do encourage you to spend 15 minutes brainstorming keywords and ideas. So basically what you're going to be doing is spending 15 minutes thinking about things that you've done that you're really proud of, things that you've accomplished, things you've participated in, things that you feel like are characteristics of yourself that have enabled your success, challenges you've faced and overcome, um, your favorite things, your favorite ways to spend your time, your favorite people, things that you love. This is a time to just put it all out there. Anything you want to write down, this is your, your piece of paper, your moment. This doesn't have to be shared with anybody. So don't worry about being modest or immodest, censoring, not censoring. Just write stuff down. And to give you a kind of an idea of what I mean, I did a little mock one. Um, this is Elmer Fudd's little mock session. So just a bunch of things that he put down here, um, or I put down as if I was Elmer Fudd. Uh, this is Elmer Fudd's, um, let's see, this is Elmer Fudd's, you know, he, he had that great carrot ploy where he almost caught the rabbit and he had his own YouTube song that's very popular. And there was that moment when Rush Limbaugh endorsed him for president over Mitt Romney and, you know, that, well, hypothetically thinking he got a quiet law, you know, so when he's like, shh, I'm hunting rabbits. So, you know, this is kind of what some examples of what Elmer Fudd might put down. Now, obviously, yours is going to be different because you have actual accomplishments. But just to give you an idea so you can understand what we're looking for. So I am going to, uh, whoops, 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 whoops. Um, I'm going to go back to this, and we're going to have 15 minutes. Like I said, try and do 15 minutes. Try not to get distracted by people near you, by your phone, by going off and having a little snack. Um, the first five minutes are usually pretty easy, and then the next five minutes are a little bit harder. Sometimes the things that you think of in those last five minutes when you're like, this is painful, are that some of the more rich and interesting materials, that's why we go for so long, not to drive you crazy. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the sound in the recording for about 15 minutes, and um, you guys should... Okay, so I hope that was a good exercise in thinking about all of the different things that you've accomplished. In our next exercise, we're going to do another exercise with the same information, with the same sheet. So we're going to spend about five minutes looking at everything that you just wrote down. You, it may help you out to use a different color ink. When you do this, it's not necessary though. So look at everything that you wrote down and think about the commonalities from your experiences and all of the things that you wrote down. And what you're going to do is can draw some lines to connect the links. You get to decide what's a link 
is all your decision. So what you're going to do is just spend about five minutes now, <laughs> excuse me, um, choosing which things tie together and just drawing lines. And you may want to, before you start drawing lines, just look at the overall pictures of everything that you've done and think about, okay, how do things relate? So you're kind of being thoughtful about how you're connecting things. So I'm going to turn off the sound again. And um, if you can just take about five minutes to do that, that will be good. So we'll, we'll resume again in five minutes. Okay, so that's about five minutes. We have one last little section of our exercise, and then we'll move to the PowerPoint presentation. So for the last section of the exercise, this is sort of part three of our exercise. Basically, what we're going to look at doing is putting labels on those connecting lines. So take a few minutes to study those connecting lines and think about what are the commonalities and themes. If you had to label those lines, what would you label them? What are the themes that you see in your life? What are the threads that connect your life? And then at a point, you'll also want to think about how do they connect with the AAMC competencies. I have a link to the AAMC competencies in this presentation a little bit later on. You can also just Google AAMC uh, pre-med competencies or medical school competencies in order to see a list of what the medical schools are looking for if you want to do that. Um, but basically, right now, you can just think about, okay, what are the themes that connect my life? So you want to spend another five minutes just kind of putting labels on those different lines and thinking about what are those themes. So we'll come back in five minutes, and this is the last of the exercises, and then I'll do a little presentation. All right, so that's another five minutes there. Um, so we're going to move on to the PowerPoint presentation, and we'll start the last, actually, piece of this exercise is your homework piece because, of course, we always have homework. Um, so when you finish looking at all of the things that you've put together, you may actually find, oh, wow, I have a mess. Um, and sometimes people want to take what they started and put it into a computer program, like there's a program, Bubble US, for example, that's a concept map program that um, a lot of people, I know Professor Richardson, Chris Richardson really likes. Uh, and that's a nice program because you can lay things out, see the connecting lines, make different colors. Um, and also other people can log in and make suggestions. So if you're somebody who has a tendency to be a little overly modest about yourself, you can have somebody else make additions or look at your information. Because what your, your ultimate goal is, is to choose a few different things about yourself that you want to talk about in your personal statement. When you put together your personal statement, you're not going to be able to talk about every single thing about yourself. You're probably going to limit it to about three to five things that you want to, to talk about or highlight about. So you want to choose um, things that are particularly important for the admissions committee to hear about. And typically, you want there to be a theme or a thread running through it. So you want to look at things that you've connected together with those lines that have a theme that you kind of feel like, well, this is a theme that's central to who I am. This is a thread that's kind of central to my life. And these are good things that I've done that really illustrate the, that thread. So what a lot of people do with their personal statements is they'll write it in sort of a standard essay format, about five paragraphs or so. Their opening paragraph or their introductory paragraph, rather than introducing the essay, will introduce themselves. And so people will start with some sort of story, something that Rather than saying, I'm somebody who likes to care for other people, I'm somebody who's had this experience in my life, will show I'm somebody who likes to care for people or will show the experience that you've had. So 
a lot of people, and if you look online, you'll see people um, starting with something super dramatic, you know, thump or splash or whatever. I personally don't like personal statements like that because I think that you want to be sharing who you are and who you are is is good enough. It doesn't, you don't have to have some like catch all or some, you know, big splashy start. Um, what you have to do is, is show them and let them know who you are as a person. I think that those big flashy starts are for people who aren't awesome enough on their own in order to attract the attention of the admissions committee. And I don't think that Northeastern students fall into that category. You guys have so much that you've done. You don't need to be relying on some sort of like writing trick in order to get attention. So you really want to start with that story then you're gonna follow it up with a few paragraphs that highlight specific concrete things that you've done that make you a good applicant. So you've done research, you've done some clinical, but talk about what the schools are looking for in the terms that they're looking for it and show, you know, this is not some sort of whim. I've done these things that are really solid experiences that have prepared me for medical school or dental school or veterinary school, optometry, podiatry school and show that I have the skill set necessary, I have the interest and the drive necessary in order to be successful in these programs. It's really important to remember your personal statement is your one opportunity to speak directly to the admissions committee on your terms. So all of the other things on the application, your grades, they're your grades. Your, your admissions exam score, it's, it's a test score. Um, a lot of the other stuff that you'll write on there is pretty prescribed in its format, whereas the personal statement is deliberately vague in its format. So this is your point where you get to decide what you want to talk about. And if you kind of think about it, if you had five minutes to sit down with the admissions committee, what would be the thing that you would want them to know about you? What would be the first thing that you would tell them of all the things that you've just written down? What would you choose to highlight or choose to start with? It's also important to realize that you don't have to tell them everything about you, even the things that you do choose to talk about. You only get 5,300 characters for MD applications, and for most of the other applications, you get about 4,800 characters, which is about one page. So it's not going to be enough space to talk about everything that you want to talk about. You don't have to talk about everything. You just have to give them enough information so that they're intrigued, engaged, interested in you. They think, oh, this is a person who I would like to bring in and talk to and hear more about, they sound like a really interesting person. So the questions that a personal statement should answer, who is this person? How are they different from all of the other um, applications that I'm reading? And again, everybody's going to have some pretty similar experiences. Everybody's going to be applying with research and clinical, and that's fine. But you just want them to get a sense, this is who, this, this is who I am. Um, why do you want to be a doctor? Why do you want to be a dentist? Why do you want to be a veterinarian? Why do you want to be an MD? Why do you want to be a DO? If your personal statement doesn't answer that question, it's not a complete personal statement. So you really want to make sure that your personal statement does answer that question. How are you qualified? Why would they want to accept you? You want them to finish the personal statement. You don't have to answer those questions directly, but when you finish the personal statement, you want them to think, oh yeah, of course I want, would want this person to be in my class. The things that you do not want for personal statements, a personal statement should not be generic. So a personal statement should show who you are. It should not be something that anyone could write. Um, which means, you know, talking about philosophy, talking about I like to help people without specific details. Um, 
those are not as effective personal statements because anybody could have written it and they don't get to know who you are. Containing a quote, just to be clear, if you're telling a story and you're going to have quote it, if you're going to quote what somebody said, that's fine. But um, quotes from Paul Farmer or Gandhi or whoever it is, they really those things have all been said before. They want to hear your own words, not the words of somebody else. It's really easy to look and say, oh, but they said it so well. And I know it's very tempting, um, but all of those quotes have been used time and time again in personal statements. And again, you want to differentiate yourself from all of the other applicants. So try and use your own words. Try and make sure to use most of the space allotted. Don't use words just to use them, but you should have enough to say that it uses most of the space. Sometimes people think, oh, I should be short and sweet because um, admissions committees will appreciate brevity. Um, they do appreciate brevity, but remember that this is only a page that you're writing. It's really not that much space that you're writing. Um, try and stay positive. Even if you're talking about something difficult, you want to talk about it in a positive light. And the last thing, um, sometimes people try and stand out by doing something different or unique. And I can tell you, I was at UConn Medical School, and the director of admissions there told us, please, please tell your students, do not write your personal statement in haiku. And I thought, wow, somebody wrote their personal statement in haiku. I think that no matter what it is, somebody has tried it before. Um, all the unique and crazy things they've tried. And like I said, you don't, you know, if this was writing school that you were applying to, I'd be all for it. Do something unique or crazy. If you were applying to a poetry program, for sure write your personal statement in the haiku, but you're not. That's not the purpose of this personal statement. The purpose is not to show that you're creative or unique or wacky. It's to show how you're a good applicant for medical school or dental school or veterinary school. So you want to give them that information. Don't be worried that they're not going to remember you because you didn't stand out by being different. You don't need to be different. Just be yourself. Um, finally, personal information. A lot of people have things about themselves. They're not quite sure if they should share it or if they shouldn't share it. And I would say, you know, think about is this central to your application for admission? If it is central, if it's part of your journey, if it highlights some of the core competencies, um, if it's central to who you are for the application process, then by all means include it. You always have to assume that whoever reads your application is going to be different from you. So that's something to take into consideration. But whenever you're thinking about disclosing something that could be a little bit of a risk, whether it's a medical condition, a learning disability, um, something that happened in your life, you know, family situation, um, something about your sexual orientation, um, anything from your past that, you know, you're feeling a little hesitant to bring up. If you feel like, okay, the admissions committee is not going to really understand who I am if I don't give this information, then, and I feel like it's part of my journey and part of why I want to be a doctor, I feel I need to include it, then you may decide, well, I, I'm going to include it. It may turn some people off, but in the end, I just need one admissions committee to say, oh, yeah, he's perfect. She's perfect. If it's something that you're like, well, this really has nothing to do with my interest in medicine. I was thinking about throwing it in for the sympathy vote or for the unique vote. I would say, you know, leave it off um, if it doesn't matter in terms of your journey. Also, remember that anything that you put on your application is something that you will be asked about in an interview. So if there's something in your life that you're just not comfortable talking about yet or at this point, 
Um, it's better to leave it off if you think it's going to make you uncomfortable trying to discuss it in an admissions interview. Finally, just the last few practical matters. We do have this workshop in November because we want you to really start thinking about your personal statement now, starting a draft, and then put it away for a little while. Don't think about it for a while and then come back to it. Hopefully you come back to it and you're like, oh, actually this isn't too bad. But when you come back to it, you come back to it with kind of fresh eyes. Um, you want to send it off to a bunch of different people who you respect and you trust and get their opinion. So if you have a physician who's a mentor, you can ask them for their opinion, um, faculty. You know, this is the time when you can ask your parents for their opinion, your friends for their opinion, um, your advanced writing professor. If you had a good relationship with them, they're a wonderful person because they're you know, usually really good writers. You want to have people proofread, and the Writing Center is a great place to have um, that proofreading happen. The Writing Center is really good with grammar and with, um, you know, does this flow well? Do I understand what you're talking about? They don't necessarily know what an admissions committee is looking for. Obviously, you'll have Dr. Begley and myself read it over at the very least. We'll read it before your committee letter interview. If you'd like one of us to read it before then, a lot of people will have their committee letter with interview with Dr. Begley, and so they'll ask me to read it before then. That's fine. In general, I recommend having like doing a few drafts before you have me read it so that it's closer to the version that um, the medical school will read, just because if I read it five or six times, um, it, it tends to get a little bit muddled and I don't get the same first impression. So that's in general the basic presentation about personal statements. Um, unfortunately, the go to meeting format isn't the best for questions, but definitely feel free to contact me if you have questions about that this presentation, if you want clarification, if you have follow up comments, concerns, um, or if you just want some additional feedback. And I look forward to reading everybody's personal statements in the near future. So thank you everyone for coming and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.